आई थिंक टूडे आई वॉज रीडिंग दी रैंकिंग ऑफ द कंट्रीज विस वी प्रेस फ्रीडम एंड पेसिफिक्स रैंकिंग ओवरऑल हैज इम्प्रूव द कंट्रीज आर शोइंग प्रोग्रेस एंड आई स्पोक टू सम ऑफ द जर्नलिस्ट फ्रॉम द पेसिफिक एंड सम ऑफ दैम वर चकलिंग and some were being hopeful the hopeful one said at least it shows that the pacific governments are listening to the grievances and the ones which were chuckling were questioning from where did the day data come and both have equal right to agree with the data agree with the ranking or to disagree because they may be may have had different experiences so their world view is shaped by those experiences now before i conclude i thought about some of the issues some of the questions that should be asked even in a country like samoa where there is relatively high level of freedom relative non violence and many good things and the questions i'm going to ask are useful in analyzing is media strong is media free is media accessible is media responsive and finally is media fair and the questions are not about media personnel questions are broadly about what should be asked of governance systems by the media and also evaluated by media houses themselves so my first question do you think that media freedom independence and pluralism is respected across the pacific island countries or including the larger nations new zealand and australia and by pluralism we mean variety of media not every kind of media is accessible to everyone those who cannot read and write will not be able to read newspapers so is media accessible second question is there a mechanism in samoa or in the pacific states a um, a mechanism to collect information about grievances of media and to take or use or by using which media people could seek redress of their grievances if there is ever any intimidation any harassment or even pressure on media personnel they could go to that mechanism and say this is their situation how do they address it does this mechanism exist in the country and this point is important because in some parts of the pacific we have seen media has been drawn into lawsuits litigation which has resulted in heavy penalties against media houses or the fear of it or the threat of a lawsuit often prevents a journalist from writing on a certain topic so are these things being observed talked about discussed by media personnel the third question is are there policies that encourage analytical and free journalism and that obligate the government and the judicial to safeguard journalists and media houses when they are attacked or when they are put under pressure and this pressure may come from not only the government sometimes it comes from society itself which doesn't want to talk about certain topics people reporting on sexual harassment are often told that they are encouraging sexual harassment 
and condemned by communities. People questioning religious values or religion are often condemned by people who profess, profess religion. People who question traditions are often condemned by their own families or societies, neighborhoods, organizations for questioning a tradition which has been long valued. So that brings me to my fourth point, which goes back to the first point about media pluralism. Are there policies in place which prevent hijacking of, let's say, small scale media, a neighborhood newspaper, a community radio, a ham radio, which provide access to information? Or there is nothing, and it is quite possible for a larger corporation, a business house, to take over media. Because when a corporation or a bigger business house takes over media, media doesn't always remain vested interest free. The fifth question brings me to a fast evolving phenomena in the Pacific. It's good, it's very promising, the arrival of the broadband. Access to internet. It's an information revolution that's coming with it. Right now it's mostly Facebook revolution. But we are hoping that it will become information revolution. And in this regard, it is important to look at that, that the kind of regulations which are being brought out by different countries, by the governments, to regulate internet, online content, whether these regulatory mechanisms, the laws and the policies which are coming up, are they stressing or emphasizing or promoting the need for verifiable source to ensure facts come online, to ensure good analysis comes online, or they are being prescriptive about what to say and what not to say online. When it is limited to what you can say and what you cannot say, then you know there is no freedom. You have been told what to say. And a final question is that, is it possible for the Pacific leadership, including leadership of Samoa, to place freedom of press at the heart of common agreements, regional agreements that are being arrived at, their institutions, and in the forefront of public policy? We had some indication of it when the electoral commissioner made reference to what the prime minister has to say. But is that the situation everywhere? Is that institutionalized position? So I would like to leave you with these questions to deliberate on them or think about whenever you want to think about them. And thank Jaws and all of you who are present today for coming to mark this day. But before I conclude, I would like to request everyone to kindly stand up and observe a minute of silence for those who have lost their lives in different parts of the world in doing their duty.
Thank you very much.